<laughs> Nothing like a good hit and sip to get the intestines going. You know what I mean? Hoorah! What's up, guys? How's it going? How how's it hanging? How's how's the week going? It's a Tuesday. It's a booze day. <laughs> it's a if it's a day, it's a booze. No, no, yep, yeah, no. If it's a Tuesday, it's a booze day. Mm-hmm. Boo! Oh my god, <laughs> I'm scared. It's the Red Rum and Red Wine Podcast, the podcast where we talk about murder, mystery, and mishaps. Ew. Here's one of them. Hi, Kristen. Here's Sarah. Hi. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, what is that crack a over there? Yeah, be sure to crack yours open. I was going to drink wine until I realized there was none, so <laughs> uh, tried and true. It's Mr. White Claw in the house, Mrs. White Claw. A white claw. Mm-hmm. Well, what do we got? A curtsy on to the, them. Uh, on the other, yes, we're still waiting for that sponsorship, but until we get it, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep promoting. It's fine. I'm going to try doing some handwritten letters. Maybe that'll do the trick. Oh, maybe if you do a nice one of those nice little like fancy wax seals. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I think I can well, make it work, actually. Yeah, we could like make their own custom little white claw one and then like yeah. they'll just have to respond to us. I wish I had yeah. um, a quill ink pen. <laughs> Make some nice calligraphy for them. I, it wouldn't be nice, probably, but it'd be calligraphy. <laughs> as long as it's considered calligraphy, yeah, they can't judge. But yeah, what are we drinking on your side of the oh, yeah. uh, screen podcast? I'm finishing... A little glass of wine, my trusty true, Ooh. trusty true, whatever I that miss means. Wine, bro. Um, the Cabernet from Walmart. But my next thing I'm about to crack open it, that I'm really excited about because, again, hashtag spooky season. Um, I got a six pack of a pumpkin porter today. Oh, yeah. But nice. I guess. Um, I'm gonna try and not sound crazy <laughs> for today's story. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I don't really know how that's gonna turn out. Um, <laughs> but but I'm really gonna try here. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna I'm gonna make myself a little vulnerable, and I'm gonna talk to you about a conspiracy theory uh, that I actually kind of. Maybe believe in? Ooh-hoo. Yeah. Ooh-hoo-hoo. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like big question mark, but like uh, there's some there's some evidence here. I'm like, whoa, whoa. All right. Hmm. Fill my glass up. Uh, yeah. So yeah, because today I'm going to be talking about the conspiracy theory of why so many people go missing in national parks. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Which, oh my god, <clears throat> I, mm-hmm. 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 which it's like, <laughs> it, it, okay, guys, it adds a total extra layer because Sarah knows, I know y'all don't know, um, I was actually meant to be camping like right now, like right now, <laughs> I would literally be in the midst of camping. So that means originally I was meant to say this story like the day before. I was meant to go camping which I like I don't know why I do this to myself but I (laughs) love doing it it just it it adds air of mystery while I'm out in the wilderness you know but gives you something to talk about too like tell around the campfire oh I was for (laughs) sure gonna tell the story around the campfire just freak everyone out but yeah it's it's just um it's something a little mystical, a little whimsical, and it's like camping is something that we do, and it's one of my dreams is to live like a, in a tiny home in the woods, so yeah. uh, to go into this 
theory, it was exciting and a little terrifying. So let's just, <laughs> let's just go. Let's just go into it. So a little bit about uh, statistics on national parks, if anyone was curious about it. Um, there's actually not much, <laughs> if any, like none, actually no information on it. So according to the New York Post, there are roughly like 600,000 Americans that go missing each year. Now, of those 600,000, about 92% are discovered, recovered, whether it be dead or alive. But out of these numbers, and obviously this is just numbers that we have reported to us, we have... And just Americans. Yes, and just Americans, because national parks are not just in America. Hello, no, we're not ignorant. We know that they're all around the world. And, like, it, this is... It's, it's everywhere. Everywhere. It's terrifying. But they, of this, like, we have no idea how many are actually going missing in federal forests because, fun fact, not so fun fact, no one in the government, the not the Department of Interior, which oversees the National Park Service, not the National Park Service itself, not the Department of Agricultural's uh, U.S. Forest Services, None of these departments keep track of missing people cases on federal land. It's just oh. something that we don't keep track of for whatever reason. Interesting. Red flag number one. Yeah. <laughs> just throwing that out there. I'm, I'm writing that one down right Yeah. Now. Like, put that on your little notepad. It, in fact, when one of the retired police officers, uh, David Politis, who is with the Missing 411 and is who gives a lot of or who makes a lot of this information accessible to like us peasant folk like he fucking did all of the deep diving for us hopefully he doesn't try to slam me with the copyright thing like i've seen him do with bigger channels i don't think we're big enough for him to even care about us but um Uh (laughs) yeah so we'll see shout out i'm i know shout out to david you're awesome i'm only trying to spread your word i watched your documentary i read a little bit of your book i will link everything down below like go support him yeah but please don't we're just trying to help but yes he uh so he does a lot of research into why people have gone missing in national parks And he had actually tried to get information using the Freedom of Information Act request, which if you're not familiar with it, we have actually talked about this in our episode, Try Not to Cry, when we talked about the cover up where we go over Lavina Lynn Johnson's, uh, the Freedom of Information Act is actually how her parents had gotten information on her case. Well, when... David tries to get information on all of these missing people's cases in national parks. He is essentially told that he would be charged $1.4 million in fees if he tried to get this. Because you have to also imagine, like, uh, David didn't have any type of, like, senator behind him like um, the Johnsons did. Thankfully, they had Clay on their side. But David was just going in by himself and the government being how the government is they're like you have no one to help you so we're gonna make this as hard as we can for you so yeah what the fuck yeah red flag number two so (laughs) it's just so fucking weird it's odd it is really hard for you to find statistics on people going in missing in national parks and it's not something that national parks keep record of nor does it seem like they want to keep record of it for whatever reason but from what I was able to find out of the 85 million acres of federal lands in the United States alone around 4,000 search and rescue missions were reported just in 2017 and that's like the early or the most up-to-date information that I bothered to google within like a five-minute search so yeah. There's probably more out there, but it's it's me it's we're lot, talking I, about. It's a lot of searches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, just for a year alone, that's it, it's, yeah. it's it's a lot. So, <laughs> uh, as I'm like, Whoa. yeah. So as of November 18th of 2020, there is a petition that I will link down below that was made by Heidi Steepman. And it is basically to make the Department of the Interior accountable for missing persons in our national parks and forests. And it currently has a little over 11,000 of the 12,000 signatures that 
it wants to get. Uh, and Steetman is a affiliate faculty member at Denver Regis University. So, like I said, I'll link it down below if that's something you want to sign. I just we've tried in the past to uh, get the department to be accountable for missing persons and it hasn't worked in the past so I'm hoping we can do something (laughs) to have them accountable because I mean this is just something regardless you should be you should be keeping track of the people who go missing it's just like yeah uh... common common information pretty much so the whole reason why this thing blew up and if you're coming from like the TikTok side you probably already have heard a lot of the theories that go on about this but this girl by the name of Sarah, she goes Sarah with an H. Um, it's at Sarah Bear with three R's and an <laughs> underscore at the end. But she posted this thing on TikTok that basically is just her showing all of these articles saying, like, why are so many people going missing in national parks? And it like went viral. It blew up. And then you have people from all all over the world basically like replying to her and saying oh here's my theory here's why I live near the forest da 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 and one of the theories that came from this was that there are cannibalistic feral people living in the woods (laughs) now (laughs) so hashtag AHS. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So, yes, exactly what I was going to say. American Horror Story did a great rendition of uh, this, pretty much like this whole theory in one episode. And I I thought it was a pretty good episode watching it. I was like, oh my God, I'm literally writing a story about this. That's pretty wild. But the theory is pretty much right on the money. And it's... (laughs) I hate to say it, but it's kind of how on point they are with some of the theories. Like, some of the things I'll say later on, like, the government showing up with random missing person cases. Like, it sucks, but that's something that happens in real life. So, you see that and you're like, uh, yeah, that's fake. But then it happens in real life and you're like, oh, my God. I, uh, yeah. This isn't making any sense. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, like, drunk trying to be, like, I understand it, so you need to understand it, so you understand it, right? (laughs) Totally. (laughs) So, there's this one TikToker, Ariel, Ariel, uh, she goes by at the Present Believer, and she posted a video on the 25th of January of this year, 2021, And basically, in the TikTok, she describes a strange experience that happened to her in the Big Bend area. Yeah. So, in her video, she says that she was camping with her husband and her daughter in Big Bend National Park. And they were camping there for the week. And they had been there a few days. Nothing had really gone down. It was their fifth day there. And they had stayed... They were staying the night at a lodge near the basin and we're hanging out in the patio area now at one point while they're hanging out on this patio they hear something and the like they're having a conversation talking and then all of a sudden the wife goes hold on hold on do you hear that and then they both stop and hear what they describe as multiple people screaming off in the distance (gasps) she says that she can hear a woman screaming we're gonna die she then claims that a blood curdling scream went on and she would describe like these as primal screams like it's not someone faking it this is like a real emotion you could hear the despair i guess in their voice oh my god oh i've literally like glamped in big bend yeah like Some i of- wasn't glamping it i just didn't stay i I'd say camping. I stayed in a little Like, my grandparents, when I was little, took me to Grand Canyon. And I'm like, you know how easily I could have been abducted by fucking Bigfoot? And you just (laughs) took me there? Okay. (laughs) Okay. Joe Dirt. (laughs) Ariel would go on to describe that she would hear the woman's voice continue to scream out, even saying, I love you, just know that. She would then hear a child's voice screaming, Mommy. 
and then hear other voices like help say help and call a stranger and she like the voices that she would describe would be like that of a family pretty from what how she made it seem like oh my god i get goosebumps like she pretty much heard a family being killed yeah yeah what the fuck what the fuck i'm like sorry if we heard that and we were camping i i don't even know what we would begin to do probably up and die literally just die right I'd, there i'd grab my two knives and oh my, my headlamp <laughs> oh my god we're not prepared for that situation in any capacity we would be drunk first off like would not even be safe for us to drive off we would have to fucking stand there and <laughs> <laughs> just like all right everyone <laughs> calm down hey you want to hit <laughs> Like, no, I don't want to hit right now. <laughs> oh no, not god. you, but the bad guy. Ooh. Oh my god. That's like, that's just the one time I could see myself not smoking weed, you know? I would just be. One time I would think weed would not help that situation. So she said that she immediately called a police and park ranger. Good for her. But they would find nothing. Like, they would walk in the area and nothing would be found. Okay. She would ask about, a f- like, is there a family in the area? Was there a family camping the next day? But none of the park employees or the park rangers said anything to her about it. Like, it, but, like, if they knew anything, it's not like they would have told her, you know? Like, yeah. that one camp guy from American Horror Story. I'm just like, right. oh, my God, it all aligns. Now, I'm really not... Uh, trying to hype this up there Mm. someone not me not i i did not do this someone looked it up and was not able to find any type of official report or documentation that was able to prove her story so i'm not saying that this is a hundred percent true it's just a tiktok that went viral like that does not mean in any capacity that this is legible or is that the <laughs> right word that this is like uh, honest <laughs> <laughs> legit but legitimate legit yes legit <laughs> thank you <laughs> legible <laughs> but, fuck you i'm trying to sound smart no it's okay but yeah. she um, but she yeah but basically like after she came out with this a lot of people would essentially talk of their own experience they would feel comfortable be like yeah this happened to you i feel way comfortable of saying my story of what happened and so all of these people would come out there was this other uh woman by the user name of coincidence theorist i believe her name is mal and she claims that she lived in the appalachian mountains and confirmed that there was local lore in the area that Yes, there are feral people that have lived in the mountains for centuries. It's like a known thing and just like people know about it, but we don't really talk about it. Oh my god. I mean, like we 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 did have an episode not that long ago where we did talk about two men who literally lived in the mountains and like kidnapped a woman <laughs> to yeah. become theirs. So like it's not that far off. Um, and, like, not long after posting her video, it was taken down from TikTok. <gasps> like, we don't know if she took it down to, like, add an air of suspicion or if TikTok, TikTok took it down because, like, she was saying some truth. But <laughs> yeah, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, but either way, it got taken down. Um, but, like, then again, like I said, there have also been a lot of other TikTokers that have come out and basically have called complete BS to this theory. A lot of them add that it it's essentially, like, adding to the redneck kind of, like, fuel mentality of, like, oh, these are just dumb mountain people and they, of course, they would be raised to be people who would go into the mountains and become cannibalistic people who would eat others and yada 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 so Mm -hmm. it's essentially bs like out of the all there's really only two theories that i talk about but this is the one where i'm kind of like do i believe that there are people that have been living in the mountains for centuries and have become deformed and 
are snatching people and eating them and can kill like huge amounts and the government knows about it and we're just like populating them to certain amounts like no I I don't think that I think that is like the very much like dramatized version of what's going on I don't know you may also hear my next theory and just think I'm complete nutso and that (laughs) that is the dramatized version but like from what I gather like I really doubt that they're fucking human beings you know that just like go off and a lot of people say like shame on you for making fun of us mountain folk like We've lived in these mountains for all of our lives and nothing weird has happened. Like, nothing strange has happened. It's just people making up their theories, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. I, um, I don't know if there's, like, this whole subgroup of ferals out there, but... Where where are the missing people? Where, where would they? they yeah. I really hope that that made sense. And I really hope that y'all are still with me. Because here's the conspiracy where that I get more into where I feel like the main evidence is and where the story just, like, I guess gets interesting in my mind. Ah. Hopefully you have stayed up until this point. Because here's where it gets good. Because <laughs> here it is. Conspiracy number two. The government's fucking covering something up. I just don't know what. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I can't tell you for sure. <laughs> okay, that one probably is a solid fact. <laughs> I guess, right? There you go. See, I'm so Like, even if smart. it's just, like, a minuscule thing, they're covering They're covering up. something up. I'm leaning more towards a Bigfoot. I know, I know, I know. But people are rolling their eyes right now and automatically calling me crazy. But, I mean, fucking color me crazy. I think (laughs) it's probably, like, a Bigfoot. I don't know. Like, there are some instances later on, maybe, that I'll talk about that sound like alien. It's just... It's weird. Let's see. Because, you know, the government cover-up, it's not that far off. Because there is documentation of the people in the government knowing about Bigfoot. Oh. people in the government aka a fucking president that we've had uh you you may have heard of him his name's teddy roosevelt Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he, he was, was a, an enthusiast wasn't he yes yes he actually was really i did not know this but um like really into bigfoot yeah like really he, like he sponsored sponsored um expeditions i think to go find yeah. bigfoot yeah like was super super duper into bigfoot and <laughs> even wrote in his memoir about an experience that i think is what started his whole bigfoot obsession and <laughs> i was like what is this it's a big footprint yeah <laughs> bigfoot footprint yeah well, uh, it's we'll deep. Get a, yeah, we'll get into that one later. It's fucking okay, sorry. wild. No, you're good. But yeah, this is it's so basically this instance is what brought him into the whole Bigfoot realm or like Sasquatch realm as uh, some of the other articles like to say that he called it. But he during one of his hunting expeditions, he ran into a man called Bowman, and he was a weather-beaten old mountain hunter. And one of the stories that Bowman had told him was when Bowman was younger of a tale of Bigfoot. And I know, like, hearing this, you're like, oh, so he wrote of a second-hand event. And in Teddy or in Mr. Roosevelt's mind, there was just no way that Bowman would have made the story up because of the way he was shaking, the way he was reacting when he said the story. It was coming from a place of true emotion, I guess, in Roosevelt's mind. But you do have to take into account that this is a secondhand story. It's not something that Theodore saw with his own eyes. Right. So in Bowman's words he would tell roosevelt that when he was young he was out with one of his friends setting out a beaver trap in montana territory 
Now, this is an area where just a year prior, there had actually been a man that had been found killed by an unidentified beast. They essentially found his half-eaten remains not that far off from where he went missing. And the people that had found him had seen him happy and camping just the night before. So it was a, yeah, it was a sudden attack. It came out of nowhere and this, it was very violent. So the men were setting up their camp, kind of like trying to ignore the fact that someone had died in the area not that long ago. And once they were done setting up the camp, they hiked or, like, hiked over the little trail down a ways to go set up the beaver trap. And when they were done setting up the trap, they went to go return to the camp. And they realized upon returning to the camp that someone had been there while they were, were gone. All of their mm. things had been flattened. Some of the contents in their camp had been spilled and thrown about. And there were these huge bear-like footprints that were around the camp. But the odd thing about it was that it made it seem like this thing was only walking on two legs. It wasn't Mm. walking around on four. Yeah. I think bears are bipedal. They can be. Yeah, they they for sure can be bipedal, but it's weird for them to walk the entire way on both feet, for sure. Like, at some point, they would have gone down. Um. I wonder what those footprints looked like. Like, could it, could they see claw marks or were there just toe marks? You Unfortunately, know? this is like, I don't even know if they fucking had, they probably did have cameras. I don't even know. But not like that. It's just like, they, I don't think that we would have had any way of getting any type of shot of what this kind of footprint would look like. Yeah. Uh, I know Sarah had, like, mentioned there's a footprint that I will be showing later But it doesn't, like, you can't see any kind of claw. It almost looks like a human footprint. It's kind of weird. So it's kind of hard to say. Yeah, I just, I don't know if Sasquatch or Bigfoot, if they have, um, what their toes are like, you know? Do they have claws or are they just, like, more like human toe? I guess the, I guess the toe. I guess the theory would be, would be more like gorilla in my mind than bear. Yeah. It's not, um... I, I, but they um, may have long nails, you know. And in one of the photos <laughs> that I that I show you, or in one of the photos that she'll, the girl shows that I was watching the video of, I'll try to find the one that I'm talking of, and I'll try and post it for you guys. I'll, like, watch it again. I have no problem doing that. But <laughs> one of the photos, you can tell the toes are, like, extremely long in, like, a Ooh. weird kind of way. Like, oh. It's, it's just it's off it, my toes are curling just thinking about it <laughs> my short toes are you, curling <laughs> I mean like I have long toes but they're in no way like that it, it's just it makes it look not human not it's not human that's the only way to put it it right ugh, it's weird it's weird it's weird so the men the men essentially ignore that someone has been through their camp i think in their minds they think oh it's a bear or it was something it's weird whatever they'll just kind of like ignore it so they reset up the camp and go to bed okay no (laughs) yeah i I don't know why they would do that i would have left (laughs) at that point but i mean okay fine whatever maybe if it was dark i get it but I maybe it was I don't know but as they're sleeping they wake up to strange noises (gasps) and Mm. basically they can only explain these noises as some kind of massive creature that's like off in the distance from where they're camping not that far away oh my god oh my god I would wake up and run the fuck out of dodge I don't know and oh I get chills reading this they noticed a foul stench which if you are not getting chills then you have not heard i think it was the portlock episode that we did they Uh no i it was skinwalker ranch they noticed a foul stench 
<laughs> I know. Sorry. It's okay. Just, all love the it. connecting, I'm I pointing so aggressively. <laughs> Kristen's all... like pointing. Uh, I am connecting the dots on my <laughs> on my chalkboard. The string. Like, yeah, the I'm connecting the, the string to the certain dots. Like I am. I'm freaking out because this is, this is all different areas have similar things. And I say like the foul stench in Skinwalker Ranch because in some of these instances they do say it's bigfoot slash like alien and i'm like yeah. oh my god it's i wonder point- what the stench is all about dude it's i think that's just like naturally unfortunately how they smell don't ever run into one of these things because i'd say like they would have the literal hookup on the secret springs and stuff and cool water spots and national parks but they're they... probably just so violently killing everything oh my god i can't <laughs> even imagine they just like I'm sure they have their self-care their are their r&r time Ugh, I just, in nope. a river or something no nope, can't can't imagine cannot imagine <laughs> something like that just chilling relaxing nope 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 i just oh i don't know so they noticed a foul stench fucking weird but they would fire their guns and essentially, like, scare it off if it okay. got too close. And then, like, fucking idiots, they didn't leave. <laughs> they stayed. I don't know why. It's fine. Yeah. They would stay another night. The next what? night, of course, the creature returned. And it wouldn't get near the flames of the fire that they had outside. But it would get as close as it could in the darkness and, like, try to make as much ruckus as possible. Almost like it wanted it them to leave, which I'm like, okay, take the fucking hint and leave. Oh, my God. I'd be Ew. terrified. So, I don't know what I would do in that situation. Leave? <laughs> I- yeah, but it depends, you know, what kind of campsite it is, how how far away from the car are we uh <laughs> yeah they don't even have cars back then i don't even know it, it's just oh mm. they I mean, didn't even have cars back then <laughs> oh they probably maybe oh 1960s yeah they did <laughs> i was like wait what year is it <laughs> fuck me i i think we're in like the 1600s bitch <laughs> i don't okay whatever it's like not it's not what we think of though whatever <laughs> Sorry. And my string was cut. <laughs> but, but either, so whatever. Either way, car, no car, it doesn't fucking matter. They decide to cut their trip short. And uh, Bowman is, so at this point, they're like, okay, we're fucking scared. Like, let's just, let's just leave. So Bowman's like, okay, I'm going to go dismantle the beaver traps. And the other dude's like, cool, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to get the camp ready. So Bowman goes out and gets the traps, and it takes him a couple of hours to dismantle it and everything. But whenever he gets back, he essentially walks upon a fucking horror scene. Oh, God. So his partner is dead. His <gasps> they neck should is... not have separated. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, like, another thing that I'm going to get into. That's, like, a really big thing. Yeah. His neck was broken and bitten. <gasps> Ooh. And it also appeared as if the body had been flung around the campsite by something that was very powerful. Yeah, I mean, geez. And he said that though his friend had a broken neck, his body was still intact and not... It's not like a, a cougar came and, like, viciously attacked him and tore like, him, tore him like, up, with yeah. his mouth and its paws. Like, this is something almost like human like like almost something with its hands like obviously it had the bite to its neck but it yeah. was just not as much damage as you think would have been done right so bowman clearly left the tra- traps and equipment and just like fled the mountains as quickly as possible oh. and m- survives years and years later and then meets teddy roosevelt and tells him the story and this is essentially like the tale that gets Teddy Roosevelt into Bigfoot, like into Sasquatch, whatever. And it's around this time that like fucking makes a little bit sense. Cause like around this time, the FBI is suddenly 
monitoring cases where people are suddenly vanishing into thin air in national parks. Oh, they're monitoring them, eh? Mm Mm-hmm. And one of those cases that comes up, which we're going to do a big jump into the future because it continues to happen to this day. It's so insane. I just can't. What's going on? I And I continue to go camping. I don't know why. But yeah, it, it, it just feeds in. So the story with Teddy basically feeds into the fact that the government knows something. Teddy really believed in Bigfoot. The FBI starts investigating into, like, suspicious crimes that happen in national parks, just involving mysterious missing people that we won't keep track of. Adds. It adds. When Mm -hmm. on November 15th of 2015, 82-year-old male (gasps) Thomas, Thomas Messick went missing on Lily Pond Road in Albany, New York. Now, Thomas Messick loved being outdoors. Okay. Loved, loved being out in the woods. All right. Like, true outdoorsman, raised his sons out in the woods. He was a devoted husband and father of three, all sons. Take him out hunting, fishing, camping. That's all they did. The mom would always, the mom would say, like, in the Missing 411 documentary, that she felt left out because they would always be going out hunting and fishing and doing boy things and she would just like be at home now thomas had actually lost his right eye when gunpowder had blew up in his face and he also had to get 150 stitches in his hand so tom lived on the wild side one and tom was also a little disabled uh due to the injury that he sustained from the gunpowder incident uh he also had really hard hearing at that time and had sorry and had needed hearing aids in order to hear anything uh but despite this and the fact that he was 86 his friends and family would say that he was of completely sound of mind and that there was nothing out of the ordinary the day that he had went missing So that November, he and a group of men had gotten together at Lily Pond Road near Bryant Lake right after lunchtime, which is a little late to go hunting, but they were just going out for a short trip, and they began their hunting trip. So it was a total of seven men in the group, and four men in the group were over the age of 80. So Tom was not, yeah, Tom, like, wasn't the only old dude out there. This was something that they did regularly. It wasn't... It's yeah. not... I, it wasn't, like, like, singular. <laughs> yeah. It's like you hear the age and you're like, oh, should someone that old be doing that? But it's, <laughs> it's like, something that they've done often. Like, it's okay. They're not... <laughs> That's, that was literally my reaction when you said his age. I know. And that he was, like, out and about. <laughs> but then when you explained, like, gun. his character and who he was... I was yeah. like, okay, that makes sense if there's <laughs> There's something in this town's water where the 80-year-olds are just acting like 60-year-olds. They're just really young and vivacious. <laughs> I mean, they're getting at it. So, though they were familiar with hunting and though this was something that they did often, this was the first time that Tom and his son Rob had been hunting at Lily Pond Road. Hmm. Now, the four older men, I'm going to try and explain this the best way that I can. Let me take a sip of White Claw first. I don't know if that's the best idea, but Lily Pond Road is a lake. It's the name of the lake. And the four, it's a group of seven. The four older men decided to stay back and essentially line up along the trail, starting with one facing the lake. And then you would go some distance, and then there would be a dude go some distance. There would be another dude up the trail, and then the fourth and final one. So Tom was the last guy who was furthest from the lake. So he was the last dude in the this line of men gotcha. along the trail. Mm-hmm. Uh, with, and the closest one was facing 
Lily Pond Road. Now, the three younger men had taken their snowmobiles, because this is November, so it's cold, and this oh, is shit. New York, so it's snowing. What they the had fuck? Taken... I was picturing, like, not that. <laughs> I know. Same, same. That's why I'm, like, making a point of it, because Texas, I don't understand snow, so I don't automatically think of places as being snowy. But this, <laughs> clearly, they were on snowmobiles. This had snow on it, or it was at least cold, like, extremely cold where they were. For us Texans, <laughs> maybe not them. <laughs> so uh, the three younger men had taken the snowmobiles and had essentially gone around this big hill and up the top of the hill. And what the whole their whole job was was to draw any kind of deer or animal that were in the area to the four older men that were waiting along the trail. Oh. And so the three younger men were going to walk down the hill. And kind of draw out any animals, bring them down towards the older men, and then they would, like, meet and, I guess, go home. Or, like, whatever. I don't know. Hunting. Dinner. Dinner, hunting, men (laughs) stuff. So, as a watcher, these four older men were sitting as watchers. Essentially watching, waiting for the animals to come down, and then they would shoot and hunt. Their job was to not move. They weren't supposed to move. They were supposed to stay in their spot and hunt. So it was really odd when at 3 p.m. the men would call over the radios and start to meet and start to get ready to leave for the day that Tom was nowhere to be found. Oh, no. He wasn't responding to their calls. The men would use their guns to give like warning shots like hey we're looking for you give us a sign you're out there like nothing and tom had a gun with him had ammo with him yeah oh could not find him could not hear from him one of it it was just getting weird so the men obviously stay and look for him one goes to find a park ranger they gather search parties they stay overnight into the night looking for Tom. The following day, they're out there looking for them. It, it got kind of weird. Like, one of the men, one of the guys said that was in the line of men. What am I trying to say? <laughs> one of the guys said that was in that little line of dudes hunting with Sam, or in that group of dudes hunting with Sam, would say that he had heard strange noises up atop the hill right before Tom had went missing. But the noises he had, how he described the noises, he was like, these weren't regular mountain noises. Like, they weren't noises that he normally heard. Right. But he couldn't describe what had made that sound. But the way he said it, it was like a quick, like, it was just like one, two, gone. It wasn't long. It was just kind of there, and then it wasn't creepy it was creepy and then on top of that like when investigators would go into the area to investigate they would make a comment on like the lack of sound in the area like the lack of living there weren't birds making noise there weren't bugs crawling around like everything was just eerily silent and no one could explain why it's just like an odd thing that everyone was like whoa this is just kind of weird now the fbi does not investigate missing adults i could google why probably but they just like don't it's not something that they normally do They can sometimes be involved in, like, a subcategory where they can be involved in missing person cases involving young children. And we have seen that in some cases where, like, an extremely young person goes missing and there's ransom or it's a really well-known case, like a national case at the time. They can, the FBI will go in, get involved. But when it comes to missing persons in terms of adults the fbi just does not get involved so it becomes extremely weird when the fbi becomes involved with thomas messick's case oh and it kind of fits into 
And that's when they learn Davis Plytus, who's the the dude who does all the missing 411, that's when he kind of discovers that, oh, so the FBI has actually been not only investigating Thomas's case, but cases that match or are closely similar to Thomas's that have been dating back since the 1960s. Oh. Because this is not the first time that something like this has happened. <laughs> I'm just... Sorry, I'm going to go cry in a fucking corner real quick. Um, yeah, so what? <laughs> Just to unfortunately end, uh, Thomas Messick has never been found to this day. Like, no sign of him. No oh. clothing, no evidence, no remains, no nothing. It's never been found. What makes this case fucking a thousand and bajillion quadrillion times stranger is that just 10 days into the search for Thomas Messick, some of the police that were involved in the search actually had to be pulled out because they had to search for another man, 68-year-old Fred Drum who went missing just 40 miles away from when Thomas was from where Thomas was last seen on November 24th of 2015. Oh my god. So Fred lived on a farm and on that Thanksgiving day because he disappeared on Thanksgiving. So fucking sad. What the fuck? Yeah, I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> that 24th Not equals thanks. <laughs> no. <laughs> so his wife had to go into town or had to leave to attend some banquet. And when she came back to the house, her husband, Fred, was nowhere to be seen. And they never found him. And there wasn't a reason for him to be out of the house or like they owned a farm. So maybe he had to do chores around the farm or whatnot. But it nothing to make you think that he would leave the confines of his farm it's weird and right after another old man in the area went uh, odd odd so where i got the tom mcmessick case and all of the information from it comes from a documentary that involves a book and both of them were uh, directed written whatever by this guy david politis now he is a retired detective that supposedly like his origin story is that he was approached by two off-duty park rangers who essentially asked him to look into all the missing person cases that happened into national parks because these two rangers were too afraid to do it themselves because of the uh, retribution that would happen to them oh yeah so odd yeah yikes And David was, this was obviously something that he was super interested, so he uh, decided to look into it. And the similarities and all of the cases that he found, because no one has actually cared to keep track of any of these cases, um, he was, like, shocked by his findings. And I will try to link his book. I will link the documentary All of it's great stuff. He has done all of the hard work. Do not give me any credit for this. David, please don't come for me. I really like your work. I'm just trying Mm -hmm. to spread the word. It's all good. So, yeah, he is a really um, hardworking dude who has uncovered all of this information. But one of the patterns that he has found is that all of these cases fit within certain like profile points that they all like tend to follow okay so not all of them will follow these points but a lot of them more times than not will have one or multiple of these things in common so what he would find is that the pattern of these cases would be that there is a point of separation at some point in the case if they are with a group of people. So we saw that in Tom's case and in some of the stories that we had mentioned before, a lot of the disappearance or the time of disappearance will happen mid to late afternoon 
which again happened in Tom's case. There is a trend where a lot of these people will go missing near granite boulders or rock fields. And then there is also a trend that they will disappear or be found near water, whether it be like a little river or a creek or something like that. Oh my gosh. There is also a trend where there will be a weather incident that happens in close proximity to the event, whether it be the day that they disappear or possibly when they're searching for them or when they're found. There is another trend where a lot of the people that go missing have a disability or have some type of illness, whether this be obvious or subliminal. So, Sarah, please don't ever go camping or hiking ever again. <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> Bitch, we're going camping in November. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also another trend where canines cannot for whatever reason track the scent so they will either find the scent and the scent will be in like an open field where you will obviously see this person and it then it just like suddenly vanishes so it makes no sense why that person isn't here in this open field and the scent's just randomly gone or they can't find a scent at all and it makes no sense and this (laughs) happens in like 95 percent of the cases documented huh sorry <laughs> did i say that right well no yeah you said well because of the nose and sense and oh yeah, yeah it's yeah. just like an unintentional pun i don't even know when i'm being funny <laughs> a lot of you're good <laughs> a lot of these people will be found in areas that have already been previously searched and a lot of these people will have missing clothes Or will be found with some type of missing clothing or missing items. And another trend is that there will be some kind of unknown cause of death, which I will describe in a case follow, like one of the next cases that I talk about. And then there's also a trend where uh, a lot of the people will disappear when they are picking for berries or a lot of people will be found near berry patches like picking for berries eating them oh which i guess would make sense if like someone's trying to survive and they want to stick by berry patches because that's like their known source of food but just a interesting hint to throw out there that's yeah no but yeah so for the unknown cause of death there is a case that mirrors this that i thought was really uh eerie so On July 30th of 2014, a woman by the name of Audrey Kaplan went missing after becoming separated from her husband while mushroom picking at a ski resort near Aspen Peak. Uh, Oh. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Like, maybe Colorado. I literally don't know. Don't come for me. (laughs) So I would assume so, but it could be Aspen. um... Yeah, I'm trying to remember where I was looking on the map. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Um, she was 75 around the, or she was 75 at the time of her disappearance, and she was in extremely good shape for her age. Hmm. On August 20th of 2014, a man notices a destroyed camping area and decides to investigate it. And when he goes to investigate, he notices that there is a woman in the fetal position that is clearly deceased in a creek. <sighs> Now, her face is submerged in around three to four inches of water. And I like I'm they do show a photo like a very blurred photo, but she is completely naked just in the creek face down. And it's very obvious, even though the photo is blurred, that her face is somewhat emerged in this creek. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the coroner would determine that though there was no finding to show that she had died of hypothermia, it would be hypothermia that killed her. Okay. No finding to show that she died of hypothermia, but it was hypothermia that killed her. 
I want to know. My head is spinning. <laughs> where does that sentence make sense? Where did this man go to school? I need to know what state he's in because I'm never. <laughs> you can't you ha- like as a doctor, you can't actually say that. Yeah. And kind of sounds like a put your name behind two that. sentence poem. What? Yeah. Like, huh? <laughs> I'm actually confused. <clears throat> there were no distinct injuries to her body. She and the coroner would also state that her face wasn't in the water, which it it was. It clearly was. So why are you he mm. Okay. I'm just I, I don't uh, e, e, e. I can't oh, no, it's fine it's fine there's also sorry I forgot to mention one of the other trends there's also a huge trend where a lot of uh, it's called geographical clustering where there's a clustering effect that happens in a lot of these locations where anywhere from 3 to 80 eight, zero. People will go missing in one, like, designated area Oh, during a given time, whether it be, like, 20 years, five years, whatever. There will be a large amount of people that go missing. Yikes. (laughs) And on top of all of this, like, there are very odd stories of people... Just completely losing place of where they are on a trail or just... So, like, a lot of times you would say, oh, how does someone... It's a clearly marked trail. How do these people go missing? How is it that they so easily lose their place that... I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Right. Well, there are these people that come out that make it out alive that talk about their experience on the trail. There was one army veteran that, and you do have to keep in mind some of these stories I'm pulling out from Reddit. Are they all true? I don't know, but you can be the judge. It maybe makes, it just gives, validates some things, gives perspective. So one army veteran was going out on a hike with his two-year-old And they were on a well-maintained hiking path. It was very hard for him to deliberately, or it was very hard for him to accidentally go off this path without realizing, like, oh, I'm clearly going off this path. Like, it's something he would have noticed right away. So he's walking on this path, and he kind of looks down and notices, like, oh, this, the trail markings are, like, starting to disappear. What the heck is going on? And he kind of, like, gets really confused. And suddenly he looks back. And in his report claims that all of the trees and the plants were different than what he remembered. All of a sudden he hears a snapping sound. And according to him, his eyes start to fixate on a particularly unnerving dark section of the forest. For whatever reason... His entire body starts to lock up and every single alarm bell in his head starts to ping. He said that no matter how hard he tried to focus on this dark patch, he could not see a thing. He claimed that it was the weird sensation of being able to see each individual branch and plant in high detail, but he couldn't focus on the scene overall. Oh. Was it, what about his daughter? It, it he doesn't explain <laughs> the daughter. He just says like <laughs> he felt this internal Did fight or flight too? mechanism and like basic from what he said he basically like snaps out of it and like picks his daughter up and just like gets the fuck out of dodge and just explains how like he essentially gets out of a tricky situation. Yeah. Huh. There was another person that I found that was on a hike with their son. Now, they were in the Great Smoky Mountains, and they, she's basically talking about, like, how she is walking on the trail and just, like, loses her place. She has no, 
no idea like how she lost the trail she just suddenly like somehow got out of place she gets this weird feeling and she's just kind of like freaking out she's like i feel like i really need to get out of here so she grabs her son and she's like nope okay we gotta start leaving like we gotta get out of here all of a sudden she sees her other son coming down the trail where she just came from and the son is freaking out and being like oh my god i found them i found them dad i found them and the mom's like what are you talking about and he's like you and baby bro or you and my brother have been gone for over three hours and we've been searching for you and she's like what are you talking about we I've been gone for like two minutes and he's like no you've been gone for three hours we've been freaking out we were about to call the cops like we had no idea where you guys were Uh, (laughs) yeah now Again, these are stories from Reddit, so take from it what you will. It could be true, it could be not. But what we do know is that there is a thousand percent a case that truly did happen. Because back in 1979, there's a guy, a student by the name of Stephen Kubaki, that goes missing for 15 months (gasps) after he goes skiing in Michigan in a specific area known as the Great Lakes Triangle. Now, the Great Lakes Triangle is essentially like the Bermuda Triangle, like a lot of ships, planes, whatever, go missing. And I guess oh. people, too. So Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so he goes skiing in this area and essentially vanishes, and no one has any idea what happened to him. They find his ski poles on a beach on the beach of Lake Michigan, and they find footprints leading oh, up. Oh, was he water skiing? You know, it doesn't say. Wait, I ski would ass- poles? That's no, I know. You know you ski I poles ass- and water skiing. I know, but it says uh, ice onto the lake. Oh, okay. So that I think sense. it's skiing, skiing. I think it's just like, I don't know if it's crazy yeah, weather. Lake or- threw me off. Yeah, I don't know. But the, so and beach too. Yeah. But the they beach, find yeah. they find his ski poles on the beach of Lake Michigan, and they find footprints on the ice leading up to the lake, and they also find his backpack like in the near area. But they have no there's Stephen is nowhere to be found. No oh. sign of Stephen. So he seemingly vanishes, and is no one hears from him again until May fifth of nineteen seventy nine. When just 15 months later, Stephen walks up to his father's door and knocks on the door and says, here I am. I don't remember much other than waking up in a field in Pittsfield, which is like 700 miles away from like (gasps) Michigan. And he's wearing clothes that weren't his. Holy crap. And he's like, yeah, I don't know what happened, but here I am. Aliens. (laughs) And if it's not stories of people missing, (laughs) it gets really creepy. I'm sorry. If it's not stories of people missing, like, huge amounts of time and them having no idea what happened or, like, the surroundings suddenly changing and them completely getting lost... It is people describing things that are straight out of a horror movie. Oh, God. <sighs> is it just, gore? I, 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 uh, I don't Bring know. Bring it on. I don't know. It's it's something. Because there was a three-year-old who... That br- shirt just moved behind you. Shut the fuck up, Sarah. That pink one? Shut the fuck up. I'm not... I'm not... I Did was you bump also, into it? I may have. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Because it literally just moved. (laughs) Don't tell me shit like that. Even if something is behind me, I don't want to know. I would rather get fucking killed on here and traumatize you. Screenshot. (laughs) Screenshot. Traumatize yourself, not myself, homegirl. (laughs) Oh, my God. Don't fucking tell me that (laughs) bullshit. Oh, my God. Because there's a three-year-old whose family... 
for fucking obvious reasons, has wanted this kid to stay anonymous so we don't know the name. Of, it's like a John Doe. Right. All we know is that this kid went missing on Mount Shasta at three... At, <laughs> all we know is that this kid went missing near Mount Shasta at 6.30 p.m. I can't even give you a year. It just it happened at 6.30 p.m. Now, the boy would thankfully be found just five hours later at 11.30 p.m. that day. Oh, good. That following day. But it was when officials would ask what happened to him during those five hours that, like, everyone started shitting their fucking pants. Because here is how the boy responded. He said... That he was taken into a cave that he believes is underground. He said that he knows it's dark outside, but when he is in the cave, he can see the entrance and it's light outside. Oh. He said that he was with a woman who looks like his grandmother and who he at the time believed was in fact his grandmother. Oh. Now, in the cave, he saw other things that looked like people, but he would describe them as robots because he said that they were not moving. So, now we're talking about witches. Or, like, robots. I literally don't even... Like, this is... I, I. After a while, he figures out that this woman, like, is not his grandmother. Mm-hmm. And even though she is nice and polite with him, he concludes that she is the robot that he is seeing around the area that he's in. Because he says that he sees other robots. They're not moving, though. So he concludes that his grandmother is one of these robots. Yeah. And... I think he's talking about dead people. He just doesn't know how to say it. No. No. Really? Because his grandmother's on the camping trip with him. Oh. So he's literally... Sorry, I know I didn't say that. I mention it later because it gets weirder, believe it or not. But the grandmother's on the trip with him. So it's... He's not seeing dead people. Like, he literally thinks that his grandma, who was on the trip with him, was like, oh, hey, come over here, honey. So he completely believing her, like, went with her. and. Yeah. He says that he took her to this underground cave and he saw all of these like people that are not moving in a room and he can only describe them as like robots, like soulless bodies. Yeah. And as this woman I have a theory on that. Okay. Yeah. So and as this woman's talking, he's like, That's not my fucking grandma. Right. So a witch, because they can appear as other people. I get appeared as more like I'm thinking more like alien. Oh. I think more alien. True, which, I mean, it could go both ways, because they can probably shapeshift and appear as whatever they want to also. I feel like a witch wouldn't need a robot. She would just use, like... Well, no, but what I'm getting at is, like, I don't know, just from um, pop culture, movies, shows, sometimes witches use soulless bodies as their slaves And they kind of just stand around until they're given orders or, like, told to do something. True. And so to a three-year-old, something like that could be portrayed as a a robot. I don't know. I just feel like if you had magic, I wouldn't... I could be wrong. She wanted to drink his blood. Yeah, it's like some hocus pocus <laughs> shit. She wanted but to also, stay. Young. Well, they want to stay young forever, so they need a young yeah. boy. I could also get on the hop on the spaceship though with the alien. Oh, theory, for sure. Because yeah. I could totally see that as well. Yeah, he would start to see an unusual light coming from the grandma robot's head. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so she would start to get pushy. And she took out a sticky piece of paper and put it on the ground and asked him to defecate on it. (laughs) Now, (laughs) he said that he didn't want to. And that's when the grandma started getting mad at him. 
he said that he saw small guns and things around the perimeter of the cave and that they had dust on them. Oh. And essentially, I like, I, that's all I got from that one article. Um, I think at one point she like got mad and was kind of like whatever. And then he was able to walk away at that point, And that's when they found him. Oh. But it's, Easy for you to say, like, okay, this is a three-year-old's yeah. really wacky, wild imagination of, like, him taking a trip, a wild, like, Nike hideout. But the thing that really just, like, throws the cherry on top to this weird-ass story is that the grandmother who did go camping with them had a story of her own. <gasps> Ooh, yay. She claimed that in the middle of the night, she was dragged out of her tent. She didn't say by what, or from what I read, it didn't say by what. And it didn't say what happened after that. All it said was that she woke up the next morning and had a strange pain at the base of her neck and that when she went to feel in that area, she felt two small holes <gasps> near the back of her head. Ooh. <laughs> I can't. I'm freaking out internally. I was literally going to go camping. It's fine. There's another man who talks about his exper experience after deciding to check out a trail area that had some broken branches that were, like, high above the ground. It was, like, some eight feet. So he was like, oh, my God, Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. So he decided to go. P.S. Don't ever do this. He decided to go and see, like, oh, let me see what I can find. <laughs> let me check it out. He started walking on the trail and noticed... And he started to get that feeling that someone was watching him. Uh -huh. And when he turned around, he noticed that there was a woman that was, like, quickly approaching him. Like, nearly sprinting <gasps> at him. Oh, Ew. That's what creeps me out. Yeah. Get away. <laughs> Even weirder, this woman had no distinguishable features <gasps> or clothing. He would say, like... He could see what she was wearing. He could make out the details, but, like, something about her made her off. Like, not Ew. fucking human. Like, she looked weird. And then he kind of, like, they might made eye contact and she stopped. Almost like she was going to fucking snatch him. And then he was like, no, bitch, what the fuck? And he was kind of, like, not realizing that he was in danger. He was just kind of, like, gave her a face, like, ill, get the fuck away. And she was like, oh, fuck, I've been caught. And then he, like, looked away, and then as soon as he tried to look back, she was just fucking gone. Okay. This one seems a bit more fake to me, on the faker side of the sto stories of Reddit, but I had to throw it in there. It was creepy. Yeah. It was good artistry, at the least. Right. But, like, either way, fucking weird. 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 And the fucking missing person cases just keep on rolling out. I mean. Oh, shit. But, I mean, it's. So, it's just. Basically, this whole theory is like, yes, I think something like Bigfoot. I don't have a lot of evidence to prove. I don't have. I'm going to get to one theory at the end where I'm like, yes. But mainly, it's just like, listen to these missing people's cases and you tell me that something strange didn't happen. I don't think it's that they went off and hiked and something was weird happened like something non-weird happened it's like no something weird happened i don't know so you have the case of david gonzalez who went missing in july of 2004 now he would ask his mom for keys so he could go to the car to get cookies she gave him the keys he went to go walk to the car never seen again oh my god the cookies are still in the car. Oh. I do believe that they... So they ended up finding a body later on that 
uh, detectives did tie to it being David Gonzalez's, but David's parents would fight it and say, like, no, that wasn't his body. It's a weird case. Like, some of these I kind of, like, you could do standoff ones, so I'm not, yeah. I don't want to go into too much detail on these in case I want to do one later on, but fucking weird. You have the case of John Devine. Now, he was in an area where four hikers had mysteriously vanished, so it's one of those cluster areas. A hot spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, he vanished after hiking with friend Greg Blazer in 1997. After separating from Greg to do, like, a little day hike, he never returned. And things only turned more gruesome and kind of a little bit more mysterious when a helicopter that was looking for John had actually crashed and killed three others and injured five. <gasps> Now, the thing that makes this so weird is that the pilot, right before takeoff, had used a hand signal to indicate that he was going to wait another five minutes for conditions to improve before taking off. Yeah. But then just moments later, the helicopter departed and went vertical and crashed right into the side of a fucking mountain. What the fuck? What the fuck? Weird. Weird. Yeah. Yeah why like weird it's weird there's nothing else you can say about that yeah and then you get really weird cases of like missing children ending up in completely random places that just make no sense so there was one missing 411 case where i believe the deceased body of the child was found like some 12 miles away from where the body had original from where that child had gone missing and it was like this is 12 miles of mountain so like we're talking about like two mountain ranges Mm. away like impossible for a a little toddler yeah that terrain let alone like a grown person to climb it's weird so you have another case of alfred belly hearts who went missing in 1938 just feet feet away from family family members so they took a quick hike near the Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado and they like I don't know this dude was just feet away you see this so many times people will be there they turn away they look back gone Mm -hmm. gone and it's not I'm telling you guys it's not like an animal came because yes I understand a cougar can like be stealthy whatever I want myself from time to time <laughs> but there's it's just like there's no way that they fucking like b- you would see blood in the area you would see a shoe a piece of clothing disturbance in the ground you would at least see like a fucking footprint a paw print something we're talking about nothing no type of disturbance anything these people are there one moment and suddenly gone the next. And sometimes I am talking like instant, Ugh. instant flash, like gone. Some like it, 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 some of them I get like, yes, there has been some time. Others, it's literally like we're talking less than a minute and these per- people just vanish out of nowhere. How mm. do you explain that? How? It's. Oh, anyways. So, Alfred's missing. No no idea. The family searches within a six-mile radius, like, all around. They get the dogs out. They, The dogs track a scent and get it 500 feet uphill. And as soon as it goes uphill, it suddenly vanishes. And the, the trail uphill was a completely random trail from where they would have thought to look for him. Alfred because Alfred wasn't even near that area so it's weird that that scent even led to that mountain hill in the first place oh yeah some hikers six miles away from this area from where he went missing claimed that they would see a little boy dazed and upset in a very dangerous and difficult to reach outcropping called the devil's nest so (gasps) It's an area where they look and they think there's no way that a boy would even be able to get in this area. Like, it's weird that he's even there. 
they would then see him being pulled back by an unknown force. (gasps) Okay. Oh, my God. Alfred would never be seen again. (gasps) They never found his body. Never found anything after that. (gasps) And they wouldn't get these men's testimony until like after they found out that there had been a boy missing in the area. Oh shit. So they saw this and they like didn't know what to think of it. They right. didn't know at the time that someone was missing. Oh. It's just uh. And probably one of the most famous cases that I'll end off with before I get into this fucking one TikTok girl. Oh my god is going to be the case of Dennis Martin, which, like, I couldn't do a case about this kid alone. It's insane. So, Dennis Martin was vacationing with his family in the middle of the Great Smoky Mountains in a fairly popular area called Spence Field. Now, while he was, while his parents were busy talking to another adult in the area, Dennis and his brothers decided that they were going to play a quick prank on the parents. So they decided we're all going to go hide and then we're going to jump out and scare them once they're done talking to the adult that they're talking to. So the three boys would go one way and then Dennis would go another way. And no one would ever see Dennis (gasps) again. What the fuck? The only other time that Dennis was potentially heard of was when six miles away, and it's so creepy how six miles is such like a reoccurring thing sometimes, a young boy would see what could only be described as a large man with something strange slung over its shoulder. (gasps) The FBI, which I guess you can conclude as, okay, it's a young child. So sometimes in the case of young child, the FBI get called in. Fine. The Green Berets were called in. (gasps) Okay. Why? Uh Uh-huh. I understand, and I'm glad that these resources were used, but they're never called in. Why are they being called in? It's It's weird. It's weird. And there's, I think, one other case of someone missing in a national park where some type of, like, military force is being called in. And it's fucking weird because, okay, it's a very American horror story, but why is American horror story, like, so on... It wouldn't be right. weird if they didn't fucking mimic real life. It, it, it's <laughs> That's like all I'm the, saying. Head, yeah. I, I don't think it's feral people, but oh my god, I think definitely it's like they have like 98, 90, they have like 80% of it right. Yeah. I For agree. For sure. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> So everyone would search for this boy, obviously. I'm really glad. The resources were not... They were all used, rightfully so. What's really bizarre about this is the government's reaction to it, essentially. Oh. So the leader of the person that was in the FBI group who organized the search committed suicide for unknown reasons. Oh. Another special force member by the name of Harold Cleveland later issued in a statement that he thinks something paranormal must have been afoot. So in a statement that he sent to News of the Weird, (laughs) he wrote... Our special forces are never called to assist in civilian operations that falls to the local national guard and approved by the state governor the fact that they were armed as well is a huge no-no during my command and every other mission i was aware of we were not allowed by federal protocol to do either something is very wrong with this missing kid scenario I've done some research on this case, both while on active duty and after my retirement. 
The inside facts of this case depict a frightening investigation. Bottom line is that searching started within a few minutes of the boy's disappearance and lasted three months with every resource imaginable being deployed. Don't even start with the terrain is difficult, holes and caves and cliffs and creeks, etc. Our special our special troops can find almost anything, any time, and in any terrain. We have the highest technology available worldwide and easily the best training and real-world wartime and mission-specific experience that the normal civilian populace can scarcely imagine. After studying this case, the fact that no trace of the boy was ever found is mind-boggling. The Green Parades that were tasked in the search that were there for a specific reason. They were armed for a specific reason. I can't and won't say why because my oath documents won't allow it. But I will remind you of these facts. Nationwide, there have only been four occasions where the special forces were brought in on a civilian missing persons case. Two of these involved a possible armed perpetrator. The other two were this case and another similar to it about three years later and regionally nearby. This is out of thousands of missing cases since the early 60s when our special troops were born. This is out of thousands of missing cases since the early 60s where our special troops were born. So long story short, homeboy just said like sketchy shit is going Hell on yeah. in the government. <laughs> I'm not fine. I'm not fine. Yeah. I'm unwell. I'm unwell to the highest degree. He literally just said, ba- like, there's a bunch of shit I can't tell you, but basically, yeah, it's <gasps> fucked. Basically, I just almost died. Going no, you fucking didn't. Camping. I'm dying. I'm dying. And so if, if that, if that, if that doesn't sanctify your belief in my craziness that something out there exists that the government is covering up there is one girl hence sarah the photo that i sent you okay um i want to give it like a quick disclaimer almost i like almost don't know if i want to give this girl's (laughs) youtube channel but i will i guess for the sake of if someone wants to see this video right this is kind of where i dug too deep into the conspiracy world (laughs) um so this girl has a youtube channel and she talks about her experience at this lake which is cool but then she talks to this one dude who has had an alien abduction story and then they get into some fourth dimensional shit and then she on her channel has this audio clip That's like some fucking portal shit to the fourth dimension. I don't know. I did not listen to it. (laughs) And if (laughs) this I'm giving a five second version of it. So I know it sounds insane. If you want me to do an episode on this dude, because his he sounds um, very crazy and interesting. Eccentric. (laughs) Except yes it sounds very um just like an interesting case so if you want to hear more about it only takes one person to recommend it I'll probably maybe do it but she essentially puts this audio clip that's like a portal thing and people in the comments I did not click on this audio clip uh I'm reading comments from like other channel or other videos that she has But people would essentially say that if they listen to this audio clip, and I get that you can get other people to comment, okay, whatever, I'm not dumb, but other people would be like, oh my god, I woke up with bruises. And I'm just like, you know what, even if this is fake, even if this is like your friends or like bot accounts typing this, I don't even want to mess with it. So I'm just... I'm just giving a warning, guys. If any of you decide to click on her channel, do not click on that audio bit. Honestly, I would just would not recommend even clicking on her channel. But If you do, let us know how it goes. I, yeah, but I don't want to be mean, but she did give a very excellent story that is a lot of valid information. And you can actually find documentation of the report that she made, which is like the only reason I'm 
including this on here. So it's like extremely valid, uh, for sure happened. Hmm. Yeah. So this girl, Olivia, she has a YouTube channel, Chronicles of Olivia, talks about a experience that she had when she went to Lena Lake, which is in Washington State, uh, with her mom camping, essentially. And she had put all of these TikToks up and they got taken down from TikTok for whatever reason, oh. like don't know whatever you be the judge of that so she posted them on her youtube and essentially she posted the tiktoks and they describe how she went camping with her mom it was kind of like rainy and cloudy there were photos of her and her mom they were wearing raincoats and whatnot and they were right by a lake and they had set up camp and she had walked over To where the lake was, where there was this, like, little embankment. And when she got close to the lake next to this muddy embankment, she looks and she is shocked when she looks down and sees just hundreds of these footprints. (gasps) Just all over the mud. Like, someone, a group of people had been walking around. They're of, like, different shapes and sizes, you know? So you can tell that they came from different whatever they were yeah and she's like what the heck is this and she shows you the pictures of like where you could see the footprints like kind of coming out of the forest and down (gasps) onto the lake and walking into the bankman and then like walking back up into the forest and a thing that she says that I wanted to point out is that she said the area that they were in is not an area where you can camp or like there are certain areas where if officials catch you they say like hey you're gonna get a ticket you're not allowed in these areas it's for whatever and like American Horror Stories points it out but like a lot of horrors will say oh you can't come here and it's meant for like preservation of the land or whatever and it's like no bitch it's because shit like that is living there and they don't want you to fucking run into it so it's so i thought it was a really interesting point and she didn't make note of it but like she had said like that certain area like you're not allowed to camp at oh or shit god. like that. And I was like, oh my god, it fucking makes sense now why yeah. park rangers don't want you in that area. But so she starts taking photos of these footprints and she sends them in and like a reporter had gone with her and like she did a report on it and whatnot and they like legit have documentation saying like, yes, this isn't some prank or whatever. These were legit just random footprints she found. But they... In the footprint or in the photo, you notice that there's this like break in the foot. It's called a mid tarsal break, and it's essentially like right below your toes, there's like this weird line in the footprint. And you can see it in the photo, like you see this line, and basically, she says that this mid tarsal break is what that line is. And it refer it only happens when someone has a really flat foot, but not in the sense of like flat foot what we think of humans, but like in the sense of an ape where like it's so flat it's almost like bending out and becomes curved. Yeah. And that's what causes that break. Now there is a s- syndrome in humans called a cuboid syndrome. Where humans can be born with a mid-tarsal break, but it is extremely rare. Like, I think she said, I don't even think she said 2%. I think she said something like 0.02% or, like, anywhere from that to 2% of the human population. So, a very, very small amount of the human population can be born with that. It's not impossible, but it is rare. But where... it. What makes it rare or like what makes it odd is it would be extremely unlikely that a group of people with this cupoid syndrome that were walking barefoot when it makes it already extremely painful for you to walk were walking barefoot in a group out in a fucking national yeah. forest. Okay. Like not no. So 
there are like hundreds of these footprints with these mid tarsal breaks in the fucking mud and like Sarah I'll send I sent you a photo and like yeah. I'll post the photo like the footprint is deep in there like something really heavy yeah like what sat the in fuck? there and she there is one photo where she compares her footprint to it and it does look like roughly the same size and I think she said she was 14 at the time that she took these photos but like she had said there were different photos with like different sizes and whatnot and it's just like the way that the footprint was it made it seem very unlikely that someone like did that with a plaster or did it like made it fake it's the way that the footprint is like people had studied it and it just makes it seem like it's not um something that's bs so yeah <laughs> it, it's scary uh especially after hearing all of the stories of something big like happening there are in the missing 411 documentary the one that uh just came out in 2019 david uh politis who i believe he is also a really big bigfoot believer as well but he mentions in the documentary two stories that kind of coincide with like an alien or bigfoot theory where one of them is where he gets with a group of older men who back in the 60s and 70s before the government told them to stop what they were doing they would go in the mountains and basically like live their life for a couple of months and just like chill out and it was a place for them to get away from the real world but they would talk about their first couple of nights there that their house they would use like a tree trunk to basically like hide themselves inside of their little makeshift home in the middle of the woods but their first nights there they would hear these like noises and one of the men was able to record it and this is back in the 70s and they have had scientists come out and say like there's no way in that time frame for them to have faked this there the technology was just not available for this to be faked yeah but they would play these audio clips of these noises and then like the men would imitate the noises back to them and like sometimes it would be like almost like a chimp like a ooh ooh but then sometimes it would be like a fucking like growl or like they were actually saying words and it is just like the craziest thing if I were to hear that in the woods in the middle of like no get the fuck yeah. out of Dodge oh I would never God. get into the woods Girl, again stay quiet don't let them hear you yeah, they would say, like, they were almost trying to get them to get out, but then I guess once they put their territory in, it was kind of like whatever, but then they were dismantled not that long ago. But they would talk about a lot of strange instances like that happening in the woods, and that was kind of... But to them, like, they loved the woods so much, they were just kind of like, whatever, we'll live in peace with them, I guess. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Yeah. And then the other instance is a woman goes hunting in a blind and basically... The She ends up taking a photo and her husband is like this really smart scientist or whatever. And the pixels in that photo are different than any other photo in the phone. And it's a Blackberry. And so just the pixels being altered. And it's not even like a 400 by 500. It was like a 421 by 589. It was just like the way that the pixels configured. It was hmm. so random. It doesn't do that. There's no way for the photo to configure like that. But what she had taken, she said that the photo was, was when she was in the deer blind, she got this weird sense. And all she saw was this, like, what she could describe as, like, this invisible figure. But it would be, like, a blur. She could only see it as it, like, blurred by. So she would see it go through the woods. And she took a photo of it. Oh. But she said that when she saw it, it put her in such a fucking daze. She was, like, so out of it. <gasps> She does, She barely remember taking the photo of it. That whole day's aspect where people just seem unfamiliar yeah. with their surroundings. It, it's creepy. Yeah. But, ooh, I don't know. That's me putting the final end on that. I don't, There, there's really no end, co final conclusion to this conspiracy theory. I just fucking think that there's something the government knows. They're not telling us about it. If I go missing, the government done did it. I, ooh, Bigfoot. 
Ooh, I'm nervy now. That's the conspiracy of why I think so many. I don't really know if that was a conspiracy, but that's like people a lot of people go missing in national parks government doesn't report on it i think it's because they know something's out there and they're just kind of like it's a treaty they're just kind of like yeah whatever we want the money we want the capitalism from the parks so we're not going to tell people that they can die if they go here yeah Yeah. i wonder if um any of the surrounding local jurisdictions keep track of them i I don't know if all of them are reported oh, is the thing. True. But then on top of that, I it would have to it would have to it would depend on if the family lived in that jurisdiction cuz sometimes I don't know, it also depends. It, it it's all big, it depends. Mm. I could well, see them damn. keeping track of it, but I could also see instances where they're like it's not our problem. Yeah. Holy crap. I mean, I really want to go camping soon, but this freaks me out. Uh, Yeah, I was literally about to say the story and go camping, and now I'm glad I'm about to just lay in a bed and not have to worry about hearing yeah. a strange night <laughs> noise other than out. my child snoring. <laughs> Hell yeah. Beats Bigfoot. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah well fucking cheers to laying in a nice comfy bed tonight because fuck all the that noise nope nope yeah cheers to uh going camping <laughs> in a national forest <laughs> and surviving okay guys well until next time be sure to follow us on twitter tiktok instagram uh youtube um good pods i think that's it I think so, at R-A-R-W podcast. Yeah, and sleep tight. Don't let Bigfoot or the monsters bite. Bye. Bye.